Jenny, I have anxiety. My biggest fear is public speaking, so this is fucking terrifying. Um, and we're off to a really good start. So everyone I know has anxiety to some level. I met some of you guys before this and encountered more than a few shaking handshakes, um, some slightly sweaty palms. I saw it during the pitches. We all know it really well. For some of us, it's almost crippling. Um, and it's the pits, it totally, totally sucks. For me, I've had it for a very long time and one of the things that it impacted the most was my career. Um, as a creative, and a creative with a degree in jewelry design, so you know, luxury handmade items, and I graduated in 08 when everyone stopped buying those things. Um, it's hard, my work is really, really personal and it's, you know, my design, the, the intellectual property of it, is really important, but I kept forcing myself to work for other people. I was never confident enough to do it on my own, and I kept finding myself in positions where the person I was working with was experiencing huge company growth, and we were doing incredible things, and oh my god, we're in Martha Stewart weddings, which is like the holy grail of jewelry design. And it was so exciting, but my anxiety was keeping me from doing it for myself, which was incredibly frustrating and defeating, which then I got anxious about, which then started to snowball, and it's just a vicious cycle. Um, I think the stigma about anxiety is a huge piece of the puzzle. None of us really talk about it, even though we all know it really well. No one will say, yeah, you know, I don't want to come out tonight because I had an awful day, I'm feeling super anxious, I just feel like I need to stay home. We all say, oh, I have a cold, or actually I actually have other plant, like just own it, it's, it's cool. It's not cool, it's terrible. <laughs> um, but just own it, because the people you're talking to probably really understand it. So in my frustration of realizing that my work was being featured and awarded and celebrated under someone else's name, I started trying to kind of find ways to get over it. Um, and for me, it was just really important. I went to school and I spent so long kind of honing this really unique, really cool skill that I was super proud of and actually really good at, which is kind of cool. And I wasn't using it for myself. I was just kind of keeping myself down. And I started watching videos and TED Talks and reading books and all that stuff. And they're all kind of negatively framed around anxiety. It's all like, how can you beat your anxiety? How can you, you know, keep it down? How can you defeat it? Let's cure it, get rid of it. And that doesn't work for me because it's not going anywhere. It's here, I have it, I medicate it, it doesn't go away, it's just here forever. And so that solution really wasn't viable for me, it wasn't working. I've been medicated for anxiety since I was 15 years old, so it's been 17 years. I, you know, I can't beat my anxiety, it's part of who I am, and I just needed to kind of wrap my brain around that and approach it from a different method. So about six months ago, I had kind of a light bulb moment and started approaching it a little bit differently. Um, one of my friends, Zan, is really incredible, but she's one of those like really existential people who just like really is good about talking about feelings and theorizing them. And we were going through it and she talked about um, befriending your struggles, which I think is used a lot for grief and I've heard it before for stress. And she was like, befriend your anxiety, make it your friend. And I was like, that's so lame and so cheesy. And my anxiety is an asshole, so I don't want to be his friend. Um, but I kind of like, the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, no, like maybe, maybe that could work. Maybe there's something there. It's the one thing I haven't tried yet is approaching my anxiety as a friend of mine, as something helpful, as opposed to something I needed to keep away, something I needed to be ashamed of or that was keeping me from what I want. So I started kind of personifying it to separate it from myself. Um, most of the women in my family also have anxiety and my sister's is very bad. 
Um, she has anxiety attacks to the point where she'll be laying in her office at work because the coffee machine didn't work in the morning and it just set her on this track of nothing's working, I'm terrible at my job, I can't do this. She has an incredibly hard job and she is phenomenal at it. She's a child life specialist, so she helps children who are in terrible medical conditions kind of, she helps them keep their mind while their body heals, which is amazing and I could never do it. Um, and she's incredible, but she has these moments. And she, I started talking to her about this, thinking like, I'm gonna tell her about this and it's gonna help, like I'm super helpful. And she was like, yeah, my therapist and I do that, we've been doing it for years. And then I felt kind of stupid. Um, but she goes so far as to like give her anxiety a name and like a physical appearance, and she has all different ones, which is a little bit too much like inside out for me, so I don't go that far. <laughs> but separating it has been really helpful because I've always been really good, and I think creatives in general are really good, at championing other people's ideas. We're super collaborative workers. When someone else says, oh, I have this idea, you know, I want to do a series of illustrations, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. How can we do it? How can I help? Can I build you a website? Do you want to turn it into, like, what can we do? Let's do it. This is so great. And we all get so excited for each other. So by kind of separating my anxiety and making it its own thing, I can kind of champion her ideas. And the thing about anxiety is that she's like your friend with zero social tact and your best intentions. She's just really fucking bad at helping you through it. She just wants to make sure you don't mess up. That's all she's trying to do. So I started approaching it in that way and trying to use it as a tool. I'm gonna sound really arrogant for a second. I'm really high functioning. I'm super organized. I've always excelled at things that I press myself to and part of that is my anxiety. I'm terrified of failure. I'm a total firstborn. I hyper prepare. I like to make sure I've thought of everything and have a contingency plan and it's one of the reasons that I generally find success if I apply myself to something and that's because of my anxiety. She's my highest performing employee. Like, she's amazing. She gets it done. She doesn't let stuff slip through the cracks. She's like, she keeps me on track. It's great. Um, the other thing I started to do was kind of reframe the timeline of my anxiety. I really was focusing on, wow, I really, I really want to quit my job and I really want to have my own jewelry line. It's why I went to school. It's why I do this. I'm incredibly passionate about it. No one I've ever worked for has felt the way I feel about working with my clients and making something special for them. I've got, I've got to do this, but what if I fail? What if I quit my job and in six months I can't pay the rent and I'm humiliated because I have to go work at a Dunkin' Donuts and I have a failed creative? Everyone who said I shouldn't go to art school would be right. I'm poor, and then it snowballs because that's what anxiety does because it's also an asshole even though it has my best intentions at heart. Um, and so I started trying to kind of get her look further out. Failing in six months would be humiliating, but I could try again. Getting five to 10 years down the line and having never even tried would be so much more humiliating. And that's different than saying, well, you'll never know if you don't try. Because that's accusatory, it's a little bit derogatory, it kind of assumes that like, well, you're not even trying so you don't even know. Like what, you know, just try it, just do it. It's not that easy. It's really hard to try when you have anxiety about it. It's really scary, but by, you know, I personified my anxiety. She's kind of a bitch, but she's cool. She means the best. And separating it from myself and championing her ideas and then realizing that the anxiety of saying, yeah, no, I'm really amazing at it, but I've always done it for other people, was that feeling in the pit of my stomach was so much worse. I'm like, oh, I tried it for six months. It didn't really work. I should probably change up what I'm doing a little bit. That seemed like nothing. Suddenly, that problem was so tiny. So I did quit my job four months ago. And, <laughs> um, and I started my own business. And I've been doing Jenny Stewart Fine Jewelry for four months. And some of the successes that I've experienced in the past four months are things that I never dreamed of doing. You know, it's, I am actually kind of good at my job, uh, which I told myself before and was like, they're getting these things because I'm doing the work. But then now I'm getting those things. And it's flipping awesome. It's great. It's so cool. And I, <laughs> I really think that approaching my anxiety differently is what helped me do that. Anxiety is huge for me. I deal with it every single day. It colors every single thing that I do. There's nothing I do that isn't tinged with an element of 
fear to the point where I won't respond to text messages of my really good friends for three days because somehow I might say something weird in that text conversation that they might think is weird and then they're going to tell someone else that they thought it was weird. Now all my friends think I'm weird and really I should just never text anybody. <laughs> and, I, and I won't. My friend had a baby. I'll talk to her in a couple months. It's cool. It's cool. It's not cool. She had a baby. It's a big deal. Like, get on top of it. Go be part of people's lives. And so I'm trying to apply it to my personal life. It's working slowly. Um, but it, it's happening. And I really think that it was the shift for me from beating my anxiety and keeping it down and being a fighter. I hate that one. Fight your anxiety. Be a fighter. I watched a video this week as I was like kind of prepping for this and realized that none of them were helpful to me. Um, that was like, it gave you like the switcheroo. It was like, befriend your stress. Be a fighter, fight. I'm like, that's not befriending. I don't like confrontation. It makes me anxious. <laughs> so I don't want to fight my anxiety. I want to make it work for me. And now it is, and it's really cool. So I'm still kind of on the early part of this, because like I said, it really just kind of clicked for me like six months ago. Um, but I've made massive changes since then. They've been incredibly successful, and I have never heard anyone speak about anxiety in the positive light. It's healthy. It's there in you because it's to protect you from something that might be scary. But she's just trying to make sure that you're prepared for it and that you have what you need to do it. So have a conversation with it. What do you really want out of this? Oh, you want to go speak in public in front of 250 people? All right, OK. You want to say no. I totally get it. You said no two years ago when Keith asked you if you ever wanted to do creative mornings. He also said, why don't you just quit your fucking job and do it? And I was like, no. And I had so many excuses for that. We were having dumplings, I think. Um, and I made excuses for so long. And it sucks. So, we had a conversation, and I was like, you know, I want to do it. I want to get better at this. If I have my own business, I need to network. I need to meet people. I should know creatives. I think what I'm doing is unique and really cool, and I think creative people would appreciate that. They're never going to know if I don't say it to them. So the anxiety was that this is terrible, and also I hate getting up before the sun comes up, and also I hate riding on the commuter rail, and also I never come to Cambridge. Um, but those are really easy things to overcome, even though I could have used any one of them as an excuse not to do it. So thanks, Anxiety. She really, I said this earlier, but she legitimately is my top performing employee. She's the best. I'm a team of one, so she's kind of important. Um, and I guess that's it. That sums up my relationship with my anxiety, who is a bitch still. I hate her. <laughs> she's awful, but I'll keep paying her, I guess. That's it. <laughs> Uh, 
Do you need help with that? Um, but yeah, uh, and DBT was basically designed for my personality disorder, uh, borderline personality disorder, and yet it works so well for just about everyone else, and I would recommend it, just look into it. Um, That's awesome. But you've heard of it. Yeah, my sister has thought about doing it. It's been recommended to her. She's trying a new medication first. But I don't, I don't know, have a ton of detail. You've done it, so I feel like you should explain what well, it actually okay. is. Because um, I'm like, yeah, I've heard of it. It was maybe kind of suggested uh, to me. It's it not is, the same. I would actually, sure, um, <laughs> look up uh, the person who uh, originated the whole uh, concept of DBT. Her name is Marsha Linehan. Um, she was a sufferer of borderline, and she basically tried to kill herself all the time, and nobody could help her. And she decided to start looking for uh, better ways. Um, and it's actually sort of an offshoot of behavioral therapy, and it's in the cognitive psychology school. Um, and it's full of evidence that it works, uh, which is great. Her main job is uh, stacking up uh, like peer reviewed articles and things that back her up. And um, it's all about distress tolerance and um, being able to actually realize that you can survive a failure, which it doesn't what? feel like you can. <laughs> oh man! But um, yeah, it's it's it takes a long time. It's skills that you actually have to work on. And it is and intensive. Have, like the thought journal. And yeah, like yeah. the time investment in doing mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. is big. It's not like I'm gonna go to therapy for an hour once a week. It's a lot. It's, it's a it's a lot. It's more you than that, but it's worth it. Support. Uh, yeah. uh, cool thing is your work cannot fire you uh, for <laughs> for going. Which is nice. That's really cool. So that's cool. Uh, Two thumbs up to that. Totally cool. Yeah. They're usually on board because uh, you know they're sick of your uh, <laughs> dick uh, behavior. Um, but yeah, I would just say, um, in addition to the whole yeah. uh, just the therapy, you get like a team of a psycho uh, a, a prescribing psychiatrists. Who prescribing is a, a really important distinction. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Actually, yesterday morning, I drove my sister to her first appointment with a, a prescribing therapist who her therapist recommended, and it's just it's a it's a really big difference. And it's really important to understand that difference. She's been on medication, but it was given to, it was suggested by someone who wasn't necessarily qualified to prescribe. They so it, it's a little, but, yeah, yeah, and it's a little wishy-washy. Um, I've been on several medications and they affect people differently and they all have different side effects. So you kind of have to try a few, but she, when we left the appointment, she compared it to like, I finally put a quarterback on my team. Like this isn't some dude who plays football on the weekends. I've got someone who knows what they're doing and can lead this for me where I need it to go, which is is just massive. And even for her own like confidence and kind of feeling safe in this journey of, of trying to help herself was clearly a really big deal. It's huge. It's big. Yeah. It's so cool. It's important.
stigma and stereotypes we have about people with either career anxiety or the way or to personality disorders. What does treatment mean? What does medication mean? So um, it's called Resident Breakthrough. We've been working with Creative Learning today. And if you ever have any more questions or want to check us out, like come talk to me or find us on social media. But this is so great that everyone is talking about anxiety. Creative Mornings is doing this globally. So if you can imagine in all of the cities around the world, people are talking 